My name is Femi Oyedira. I'm the co-owner of Graf Wine Shop in Charleston, South Carolina. This is my wine playlist. You know, just curiosity led me to wine. Um, just not having a lot of information or background on something to me um, is always stimulating. And I picked up a few books and I picked up a few more. And before I knew it, I was kind of like hooked by wine. I had a really great mentor at the restaurant, Rick Rubel. Over the years, I've just kind of been taking deep dives into the world of wine, whether it be studying, whether it be exams, travel, opening my own shop. Graft has really been an incredible platform for me to kind of not just you know, get into wine, but to also kind of have my own imprint. Good music, good wine, good times. So we've got a quick mixtape of a really, I think, cool and eclectic wine selection. So to start off with champagne, you gotta always have a banger in your, your cabinet, your fridge, whatever you pull your wine out of. This is Ruel Pertois Champagne. At Graf, we focus exclusively on grower champagne. So these are, are, are people that own, manage their vineyards and also produce and market their own wines. Um, so this is a small family, Ruel Pertois. Uh, they're actually in the Valley de la Marne, uh, which is one of the major champagne growing regions. But this wine in particular actually just comes from three different Grand Cru villages in the Cote de Blanc. It's all Chardonnay. This is just superbly tasty champagne. I mean, it's good anytime celebrations, whether you're mad at somebody, you're mad at your ex, pop this. You know, if you're happy, you've got a good song you want to listen to, pop that, whatever. It's a banger for sure. Next up, we've got some, I was in Austria earlier this spring, and I got to visit a few just really amazing producers. And this is one made by a gentleman named Hannes Schuster. This is his family's winery, Rosie Schuster. They're in Bergenland. And this is just devilishly tasty white wine. It's a combination of mainly Grüner Veltliner with a few other kind of indigenous varieties. What's really important here is the texture. As someone that loves to drink like Burgundy, Chardonnay, you know, wines that just have this beautiful balance of ripeness and acidity, this to me is perfectly in line with that. It has this gorgeous weight, it's got beautiful acidity, and it's such a fabulous interpretation of Gruner Vettliner, um, which I think is just a really great wine to have anytime. It can make, you know, really inexpensive wines, or it can make just exceptionally delicious um, wines that I think are can be a problem at the dinner table, and I mean that in a good way. That's really good. Next up, another drop from Austria. This is a wine made from Thomas Straka. He's in Eisenberg, which sort of is the area that is kind of closer to the border of Hungary. They kind of share a lot of tradition. Really mainly, this is Blaufrankisch, which is one of the really kind of cheap red grapes in Austria. And what I love about these wines is Thomas is able to finesse this really beguiling character for Blaufrankisch that reminds me of Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley, from like Chinon or Samur. So it's just beautiful, red-fruited, slightly peppery interpretation of Blaufrankisch, which I just, I think is striking. And it's a great surprise for people that have never had the variety, never had Austrian reds. They love French reds. Holy mackerel, you love that. Next up, we've got some Pinot Noir from Sheba Wichern. This is one of my favorite discoveries in the last couple of years. This is a you know one-two punch combo made by duo Akibo Shiba and Chris Wichern. Um, the wines are made by Akibo. She is um, just uh, incredible. This is a single vineyard Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley. It's um, from the Havilland Vineyard, which is in the newer AVA of the Van Duzer Corridor, which kind of gets um, these cool coastal winds that are able to kind of funnel through a gap in the mountains. It's extraordinary Pinot Noir. They're amazing. They use little to um, no use of any sulfur. They're very clearly just handmade wines. These are gems. If you love Pinot Noir, you'll love this. Next up, I have this love affair, growing love affair with Corsican wines. This is uh, New Luch, which is crazily this wild synonym for Sangiovese that just happens to grow in Corsica. So it's one of the rare opportunities where you can find this crazy meeting point between French wine and Italian wine. And it's weird to say, but I think if you taste this wine, you really get it. And this is just one of my favorite reds to dazzle people with. It's just perfect in every way. It's fruity, it's got beautiful acid, it's got great weight. You can rock this out with steak, burgers, treat it like Beaujolais, treat it like heavier wines. It's just like a an amazing sword to, to wield at any dinner. So, And lastly, what we're sipping on, we've got some Rosato Rosé, beautiful rosé from Tuscany, from Sesti. This is made by a gentleman named uh, Giuseppe Sesti. He bought this beautiful medieval castle and property in the 1970s, planted vineyards in like the early 90s. I believe this is one of the first Rosatos that was made in Tuscany, but if you love Sangiovese the way I love Sangiovese, and you just wish you could find some, you know, Sangiovese in a very light summary form, I mean, this is just perfect. 
It's got such beautiful bright fruit, amazing tantalizing acidity. It's just a really, really amazing um, rosé that's showing up just in time for hot summers in Charleston. So if you're chilling out on your friend's porch or you're hanging out eating beef carpaccio or tartare with friends or just having a good time and you want something cold, delicious, bright, Sesti Rosato from Montalcino. So anyways, rock star lineup, all great wines. Have a good time. Open them all up, put on a good playlist, one of mine. Have a good time.